coming up on this episode of Outlook TV. Vancouver Pride runs circa 2018. Dating Amber, the premiere. Emily checks out Queer Van Soccer. And much, much more. Hello and welcome to Outlook TV. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And I'm Robert Mackay. And I am cold. <laughs> it's winter in Canada. But you're watching the Queer Magazine News Show that brings you the stories that matter the most from cold coast to cold coast. <laughs> We're going to kick it off going back to the summer. Oh, the summer. Mm. Remember the summer? Sun <sighs> and warmth right. and movement. Mm. Sister Fancy Pants was back in 2018 at the Pride Run in Vancouver. Let's see what it was like when we moved. We're at the 14th annual Pride Run and Walk, the official kickoff for Vancouver Pride season. We're raising funds for Out in Schools as well as the Loud Scholarship Foundation. Let's join the run. How many participants do we have this year? This year, uh, online registrations, we had about 380. Uh, late registration, we've got about 10, 15 so far. And uh, I'm hoping that we can break 410, which will make it the largest Pride Run and Walk to date. Yeah, my very first uh, Pride Run. But I'm a, I'm a runner. You know, I did, did the Sun Run with Front Runners and, and everything, yeah. And any reason why you joined the Front Runners this year? Um, I think just to, to meet you know like-minded people who en also enjoy running. Did you guys fundraise? Yeah, we raised. How much did we oh, raise? Over four thousand dollars. Over four thousand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. And why do you guys keep coming back? My record. My roommate is the organizer. <laughs> <laughs> but besides that, we love to support Out in Schools and the Loud Foundation, and we've, as we said, been doing this for the past four years, and I think we've actually been the top fundraising team every year, too. This event's a lot of fun. It's just an opportunity to get out there and uh, be part of the community, support the community, and uh, and just to have a good time. It's such a beautiful day to be able to run on the seawall with almost 500 other people, uh, all just celebrating who we are, celebrating pride, celebrating diversity. 10k together I've only done one other, one other 10k yeah. and like you know when you're training it's like so difficult to keep up but when you're on like the run and there's people cheering and supporting it's so much fun like it's it's great you, it's hard to stop and walk you know when you're so supported yeah they keep you going we were we're like eight minutes faster than what we were expecting For Outlook TV, this is Sister Fancy Pants just finishing the 5K walk in Vancouver, BC. Well, I wouldn't want to be out in a boat right now, but you know, back in the nice weather, a couple of years ago, mm, yeah. kayaking, that would have been nice. Yes, our very own Emily covers a story of LGBTQ people paddling a boat, being in the water, and being far more active than I have been in the last 365 days. Hello, viewers! Today I'm going to show you how to find your true roots. Outlook TV is here at Vanier Park Kitsilano and we're locked, we're loaded. Let's get wild. So we're just going to paddle and then I'm going to turn the GoPro. Wild Root Journeys is an ocean kayaking company and I take people on day trips and on multi-day trips around Vancouver as well as Vancouver Island. Uh, we have a four-day trip right now that's offered for the LGBTQ community and it's LGBTQ specific uh, and that's happening in August and it's doing so well I think we'll be adding a second trip as well in late July. Um, it's a beautiful place, the Broken Group Islands. It's uh, just 
what is it? It's two hours away from Nanaimo, so it's pretty easy to get to. Our meeting place is in, Al in Port Alberni, and we'll take a short ferry out to the Broken Groups and paddle for four days. And I'm, I'm going to be there following you guys or with you guys, guiding you through the area as well as... Uh, cooking all the meals and bringing <laughs> just bringing all, out all the the life of the area there's a really rich history to the area as well as just beautiful scenery and lots of wildlife to see and why do you think groups like this are important for the community being a part of the lgbtq community myself uh, i just like bringing my crew together and uh, i've had a really good response from other people that just want to in the community that want to um, be outdoors be active and just find people with similar traits in themselves as well yeah you're signed up for the multi-day kayak. Let us know what you're planning to expect. I actually don't know what to expect. It's just going to be a journey. You're, we're going to be camping. Um, we're going to be one with nature. I, you don't get that often now um, in BC. Campsites are always so busy now. So we're really going to be in untouched nature. And to get there um, by our own bodies to get to certain places is going to be amazing. So I'm really excited just to enjoy nature. I grew up uh, in the valley and loved the rivers and stuff, but to be out in the ocean is a, an extra special place to when you live in the city and work 9 to 5 downtown. To meet me on a day paddle, come out with a bottle of water, come out with uh, maybe a couple extra layers. The weather can change at any moment's notice. Uh, some sunscreen uh, hat or shades, anything like that. Uh, you don't need to know how to swim to come on these activities. I'll be there and if you do fall in then, then we can get you back in very quickly. It might be a little chilly and shocking but it's, it's not too bad and it actually happens very rarely. Maybe once in my season at most and it's usually when someone really wants to go for a swim. Uh, we have life jackets to keep you safe as well. Holy kayak, that was so much fun. Did you see me out there? I'm Emily Ann Fraser reporting live for Outlook TV Vancouver. We're gonna have to take a little break now. And like a wet dog, I'm gonna shake this thing up. Come join me, Rebecca. No thanks. Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. And we're going to take a safe, physically distant flight over to Montreal, where Miss Butterfly did her 20th anniversary show. Sounds like she's ready for her to come out of her cocoon. <laughs> well, hello, Outlook TV. It's me, Ollie, and I am beyond excited because a Montreal drag legend is about to call me on Zoom this evening. That's right, the one and only, the international Miss Butterfly is celebrating her 20th anniversary in the drag industry. And we're going to talk about their favorite moments in her career right here, right now on Zoom. Check it out. Who would have thought that I would be celebrating my 20th anniversary of drag? in a COVID mode. It's amazing. I'm so unique. Back in the days, I was uh, 20 and one of my best friends was a makeup artist at Collège La Salle and he had uh, to have uh, a male model so that he can transform in, uh, in a woman. So he chose me and I said, okay, why not? I'll do it. So, uh, and then the next week after that, we said, Oh my God, it will be so funny if we dress up again and we go out to the village uh, and have fun, which we did. And then the uh, manager of a, a club called Unity uh, proposed to me if I want to perform. And I said, oh my God, what, we can get paid to do this? Like, this is impossible. And uh, he said, yeah. I'm like, okay, well, let's try this. And this is how it started. The rest is history. I am a white queen, but I, I'm still, I'm, I'm an ethnic, you know, I'm from the Middle East, I'm Lebanese, I'm, I'm, I'm different. Even if my skin is white, it doesn't really describe my roots and where I'm from or uh, where I'm going also. So I really like the idea behind a butterfly that uh, actually, you know, a butterfly starts as a little egg, then a caterpillar, and then 
uh, cocoon and then the beautiful butterfly. And also the idea behind it is like, it's the evolution. So when you see me perform, it's always an evolution in during my number or my career. A butterfly, you can never know if it's a female butterfly or a male butterfly. When people see me, oh, is it a girl? Is it a boy? Oh, it's a drag queen. <laughs> One year I went for a vacation actually to Puerto Vallarta and uh, I saw some queens over there and we really connected and I, I, I was doing shows already in Montreal. We built a new place next to the lobby at the Blue Chairs Hotel Resort by the Sea Puerto Vallarta in Mexico and we called it the Butterfly Cabaret and it's a great experience. Yeah, and I have my own nights at Bar Le Cocktail. <laughs> Well, make sure you go hit that follow button on Instagram at Miss Butterfly Queen to know what Miss Butterfly will be doing in the next months. For Outlook TV, this is Ollie in Vancouver, but virtually in Montreal. Let's head off to the Bill Reed Gallery in Vancouver for Indigiqueer. There's new terms popping up all the time, and this one has sounded pretty interesting. Let's glue ourselves to the screen. Today we're at the Bill Reed Gallery in downtown Vancouver to talk with them about their current exhibition, Resurgence Indigent Queer Identities. Let's go see what it's all about. We're the only gallery in Vancouver who focuses on Northwest Coast Indigenous art. Um, so we kind of mostly focus on um, artists uh, within Vancouver, but also kind of broader within British Columbia. Um, so Bill Reed is definitely one of our, a lot, a lot of our focus, um, but we also introduced uh, more contemporary artists for sure. So we're uh, hosting this exhibition to give voice to Indigenous queer artists who typically may not have that opportunity. Um, all of these artists uh, each have their own identities and belong to different Indigenous groups. Um, so we wanted to give power to their voice, I guess, uh, and allow them to have the space to showcase their identities. Uh, Jordana Luki is the head curator of this exhibition. Um, so she is actually, uh, she works in our education programming, um, but she was able to create this wonderful exhibition of these four different talented artists and uh, bring them together to express their voices. And so Levi Nelson, whose art is right behind me here, uh, so he focuses mostly, mostly on paintings. So a lot of his paintings are very bold and colorful and very playful um, aesthetics to them. Um, there is uh, Raven John, so uh, they do a lot of uh, installation work, um, very pastel aesthetics, definitely talks or speaks a lot to their personality. Then we have Morgan Whitehead. They have uh, a lot of uh, jewelry and fashion pieces, um, so they're kind of, uh, I would say, kind of medium is more like playful as well. A little bit of humor, but also a lot of very intricate work. And then Jazz Whitford, uh, they do uh, paintings, a lot of muted kind of earthy color abstract paintings. And then it, I think what they kind of want to showcase in their work is uh, a lot of kind of colonialism and their connection to their own identity as well. I think that you know, the kind of revitalization that Indigenous queer folk are being able to live out now is, is kind of a great thing because they never really had that kind of representation before. Um, so I think this exhibition is a great celebration of how, you know, they, they should be celebrated. For Outlook TV, this is Angus Pratt at the Bill Reed Gallery in downtown Vancouver. Uh, remember back when you were a teenager and not too sure what the heck was going on? In Dating Amber, you've got queer kids who aren't sure they're queer yet coming out. And we're not talking about the stone. This is Amber, a person. So let's see what that's all about. The film Dating Amber had its Canadian premiere at Toronto's Inside Out Film Festival. We are going to talk to the writer and director of the film, David Frame. I still love making. How come he didn't touch Tracy's boob? Dating Amber is about um, Eddie and Amber, who are two teenagers in 1995 in Ireland, and 
they're both gay but not out so in order to stop all the taunts and speculation around them they decide to fake a relationship um so it's basically a platonic romantic comedy about these two teenagers two for a rockabilly i'll go out with you what do you want to go out or not Okay. I mean, I think it's unfortunate that, you know, this whole year has stopped us traveling and seeing the film with an audience in the way you, you would otherwise see it. I made it for a queer audience and, I, you know, I made it for myself. I wanted it to be the film I wished I had when I was growing up. So to know that it's being seen by queer audiences in places like Canada is, is really heartwarming and really, really important to me. So it's lovely. And the feedback has been extraordinary. I'm gay for boobs. I'm not gay. Yes, you are. So am I. I grew up where the film is set in Kildare in Ireland and you know I grew up in a military family so it's quite autobiographical and I had a friend in school who later came out to be a lesbian and I obviously came out to be gay so it was kind of a in hindsight this would have made our lives so much easier so that was the birth of the idea and it kind of just unspooled from there. It was a very very long casting process particularly to find the two leads I mean I think for me I was always very aware of the fact that the film kind of lived or died on their shoulders, you know, particularly Anna and Marnetti's. And once I saw Fiona and Lola's tapes, the actors, they were incredible. Together and I knew I'd found my Amber and Eddie. I had a very clear idea of what I wanted, but they're so brilliant and they brought so much of themselves to the roles and I really think they went above and beyond what I expected. And the fact that they became such close friends themselves, I think that that kind of love they have for each other really sings through and is really what makes the film work. Any comments on Eddie's internalized homophobia? It's a really tragic element of internalized homophobia for a lot of people. Um, and indeed for me, I was really self-hating and I would have lashed out. And I think I wanted to kind of reflect that. I think, you know, it's it's a very comedic light film, but there's there's quite dark moments in it that are very true to life. And I think have really sung true to the experiences of a lot of, of people, you know, young closeted gay men in particular. You know, you can tell me anything and I will love you no matter what. I know. I just want people to see the film and have a good time and enjoy it. Um, and I, I want to apologize in advance for the amount of hand jobs that are in it. Well, you know, I didn't realize in advance how, how, how many there would be, but um, yeah, enjoy it. <laughs> the film Dating Amber is available in Canada on video on demand. This is Gary Wolfeater for Outlook TV. We're gonna have to take another little break now. What's that, is that the coppers? Oh. They can't take me alive. They'll never figure it out. I've got the treasure and no one's getting it. See? <laughs> Welcome back, you're watching Outlook TV. I don't think this episode could get any more active, because back in 2018, Emily was up to other active things, including soccer. Excellent soccer. Mmm. Let's see what the rough and tumble turf brought us. Oh, hey. Didn't see you there. Well, you're just in time, because Outlook TV is here at Clinton Park in Vancouver, BC, and today we're going to sock some balls with queer van soccer. It's very much what the title suggests. It's queer people coming together to play some fun soccer. It's all levels, um, different identities, those who identify in various ways as female or non-binary. And yeah, like I said, it's beginners to experts. Just come play some queer soccer. Do they need to be a crazy soccer player to join this? Absolutely not. And that's the wonderful thing about this league specifically is we welcome all levels and we make sure everyone feels comfortable no matter what level they're at. Uh, we have people who have never played soccer before and then we have people like myself who has played 20 plus years. The nice thing about this is you can have sober conversations with people. It's a good way to meet people and remember those connections and build those connections over a longer period of time. A lot of leagues are focused on uh, gender and centered around uh, making a space for women or for men and queer men's soccer really focuses on bringing everybody together that uh, feels 
at home in the queer community and so it's more of an open concept for a soccer field. How long have you been playing? This is my second season and it's been a great way to connect with people and make friends and build community. This is actually our first year we signed up together. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's about kind of it. like a team bonding like thing for us. Yeah. Never played QVS before. No, but it seems like a cool league to play in, so we're excited for the season. Why do you think groups like this are important to have in the community? I think it's important because it creates kind of like a dialogue for the queer community and creates awareness for it. As if it doesn't have enough awareness already, it just provides a safe space for people to come and play a sport because sports bring people together, and I think it's phenomenal to have a league like QVS. What would you say to somebody sitting at home, thinking about joining, what would you say to them? I say the weather's normally beautiful, so why not get outside? You don't have to be an athlete to join. It's absolutely for everyone, and we love that about it. And try it out. If you hate it, you don't need to come back. And it's really about the social atmosphere more so than the sport. Come out and kick the ball. <sighs> well, I didn't make the team, but I had a great time. I'm Emily Ann Fraser, you're watching Outlook TV Vancouver. Let's head back to 2017 to Vancouver Pride's Sports Day. Oh, this episode just keeps getting more active, more sweaty, more testosterone driven. I love it. Woof. We're at Vancouver Pride's Sports Day at Second Beach, where they have volleyball, games, and lots of things going on. Let's check it out. This new uh, Pride Sports Day, thanks to the Vancouver Pride Society, it's going to be a massive day. We've got interactions from other LGBT sports clubs, which is fantastic. White Cubs, BC Lions, and the Canucks are coming out. We're an LGBTQ sports organization. We have almost 200 members. Uh, volleyball is our main focus, and uh, we have everything from our rec league or that plays on Friday nights all the way up to open play where a lot of our guys and women go to tournaments all over North America that are North American Gay Volleyball Association sanctioned. We have a level of play for everybody. We do indoor in the fall and winter and spring and we also have our uh, grouse league and new for this year beach league as well. So on August 19th at our game against the Houston Dynamo, we're hosting our annual Pride Night uh, where we're welcoming LGBTQ plus uh, groups from all over uh, the Lower Mainland, uh, also the United States uh, as well, to come out, uh, celebrate Pride and uh, join in a fun uh, Whitecaps game. Lots of fun, a lot of energy as well, just an amazing time uh, and a lot of color as well. <laughs> So I'm here with Tantra Fitness today representing to uh, demonstrate what we teach which would be pole fitness, aerial fitness such as aerial hoop is what you see behind me here and aerial silks. Um, it's kind of a circus performance art. So what we're here today is, to do is basically show people exactly what we do, let them get in and try a few tricks themselves, maybe learn a few things. What, what we're really trying to do at Tantra Fitness a lot of the time is fight the stigma associated with it because people seem to think that it's associated with stripping or I mean there is an exotic dance element and we do teach that exotic dance element to people that are 19 and plus. We're proud. We're to two be... moms. We're partners as well. <laughs> yes. We have six kids. We have six kids together. together. I have four. She's got two. Yeah. So they're one of those modern blended families. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, we just love community events. We were invited to do Pride's um, event, and we just said yes, of course. And we love sports. Yeah. So table tennis is our sport, and we wanted to bring it to the community. We are on the North Shore, situated in the lovely North Shore Mountains. We also teach senior classes. We also have. Uh, Happy Hand Sable Tennis, which is uh, youth with disabilities. For Outlook TV, this is Gary Wolfader from BC Pride Sports Day. That's all the time we have for this episode of Outlook TV, but we'll be back again pretty soon. Pretty soon? That's not soon enough. You know what you can do? Connect to the internet and join us on Facebook or Twitter or dot .com or, you know, I don't know, Pinterest, Etsy. I'm sure I make things. Check it all out. Volunteer with us by shooting us an email. We need people across Canada. We're always looking for good people. Ah, who isn't? 
Anyway, thanks so much for joining us. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And I'm Robert Mackay. Stay, Stay safe, safe, Canada. Canada.